Hey listeners, host Tyler Valencia here. Before we get to the episode, I want to tell you about a product I wear every day and has been a game changer for my health, Naboso Performance Insoles. The Naboso line of insoles are recommended for waking up the feet when standing at work, enhancing foot awareness, and increasing foot stimulation. I personally wear the Duo insoles, which offer the highest level of stimulation, and I can't say enough positive things about them. I used to have foot pain after sitting at my desk, working away all day, and it would make getting ready to work out a process and a half. Using these insoles has helped me, and if you want to give them a try, head to the link in the description and then come back to share your feedback with us. Welcome to the Kips Personal Trainer Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness. We have an episode that I'm super excited to get out there, talk about more because the guest. I enjoy the products that this guest brings to the fitness industry or even just the health and fitness industry. We have Dr. Emily Splickle. She is from Naboso, plenty of other things. Dr. Dr. Splickle, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, we're going to kick things off to kind of set the stage for everybody tuning in and listening. Can you give a brief description? Maybe not so brief because I do actually want to set the stage pretty well here. Can you talk about your current business and even your background? Yes. So I am a podiatrist or really a functional podiatrist and a human movement specialist. So I do have a clinical side to my background, um, the way that I look at feet and human movement is from a very integrated perspective. I'm very intrigued by and passionate by sensory stimulation and how our feet and the skin in the bottom of our feet is actually a gateway into our brain, our nervous system, how we control movement. And outside of being a podiatrist, I run an education company called EBFA Global. And that is a education company for professionals where I create content on, of course, barefoot stimulation, uh, foot to core sequencing, gait assessment, movement assessment, uh, and everything fascially integrated. And then finally, my other career or business is that I founded and run Naboso, which is a sensory product line to help optimize the way that people move. And we do that through stimulation of the feet and the hands. So we have insoles, mats, flooring, and socks. Very cool. Very cool. And something that we talked about before, and just a side note, if you've listened to this podcast before, or even any other podcast I'm on, that I've actually talked about your products before that, and I'm wearing them right now as we're recording. I have the duo insoles on. I thoroughly enjoy them. I've talked with many people before about how I used to have foot pain just from sitting at my desk all day. Then when I try to go in the gym, it would be just a, a process just to get that ball rolling, just trying to get the feet. I don't, I, I don't like using that word woken up or get them ready for exercise. But ha- since integrating these insoles into my daily life, such a difference. So I'm a big fan of the Naboso insoles. Can't speak more about them. But what I do kind of want to talk about now is EBFA, because I actually forgot about that in the preparation for this podcast. How long have you been running that company? And uh, can you talk a little bit more about the certifications that you have? Yes. So I launched EBFA in 2010, where I started with smaller workshops that were introducing foot anatomy, foot assessments to the fitness professional primarily. Um, I forgot to mention that I've been in the fitness industry for 20 years. So that Mm -hmm. is a pivotal piece to this. Mm -hmm. So my first business outside of being a personal trainer, group exercise instructor is that I was a fitness educator and then founded EBFA Global. Mm -hmm. Um, So initially we had these smaller courses on feet and movement and balance. And then in 2012, I launched our first formal certification, which is the barefoot training specialist. And now, 10 years later, we have two levels to the barefoot training specialist. We have a barefoot RX, which is our rehab specialist certification. We have barefoot strong, which is our, it's a barefoot balance training workout that I created. And I taught uh, at various gyms throughout New York City over the last several years or last decade. Um, And then... (laughs) Uh, We also have additional ones now that we've launched, including um, pelvic balance, which is looking at 
really the deep fascial connections of our core and how they connect to the feet and movement and gait and energy transfer. Mm -hmm. Run injury free is another one. Uh, and then we're actually launching a certification in conjunction with Novoso, which is a neurosensory specialist. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. And for those listening, and I think this is an area that more fit pros should dive into, in my personal opinion. I think this is something that you don't really see in a traditional, I don't like using that word either, the traditional certifications or entry-level certifications, but really how the feet play into exercise. It's one of those things that you don't see it as often, but once you do dive into it, you're just kind of blown away. You're really blown away with how it integrates to so all exercises. What is kind of your pitch to fit pros and in terms of here's why this can be so beneficial for your training, for your programming, for your clients? What do you typically say to them? Yeah. So if you're thinking about your client, any exercise that they're doing, their movements, maybe they're a runner or an athlete of some sort, is if you think about the fact that the only contact point between the body and the ground is the feet, mm -hmm. then obviously that's going to be influencing their stabilization, their postural alignment, their mm -hmm. glute activation. So it's really integrated um, from a kinematic and a kinetic perspective that we can't, we cannot forget to appreciate or integrate the feet. Mm -hmm. And what I do when I teach workshops and just these you know, smaller entry level workshops at a conference or to various fitness facilities is I get the trainers and the fit pros to appreciate how much our feet are part of the core. And I actually will show them how to sequence or stack foot engagement with core engagement. And then I, I take them through an exercise, kind of this um, uh, jump preparation and then I have them do that same exercise, but relax their feet. So engage their core, do the movement, but relax the feet. So take them out of the picture. And immediately everyone notices that there is a drop in their core activation. And then mm. I say, aha, uh -huh, see your feet are part of your core and your overall core strength and stabilization. So therefore you need to train the feet. Mm. I might have to take some of that. And I, I actually, after this episode, I actually want to try that with one of my courses that I, or workshops that I speak on at uh, conferences is I call it breaking the core. And I always give a lengthy definition that's two handfuls probably worth of different research articles and just kind of going through the history of core training. And ultimately we end up with the definition that includes from the knees to the elbows, including the core, but the way that you describe it and the integration of it, it, it makes sense as you're talking about it. And I think that's a fun little practice right there for all fit pros to go through that sequence that you just mentioned. And the best way that myself, when I think about how the feet integrate into things that I do when I exercise, I do a lot of power lifting, Olympic lifting, is that you build from the, the ground up that the increasing sensory in your feet to potentially increase your power output. I've personally seen that difference play out that before going through that whole process, having pain in my feet, but all of a sudden we're now walking into the gym and potentially having more increased sensory in your feet. I think it's a, it's a game changer for athletes or anybody on the day to day going around throughout their work, daily life, working out if they are weekend warriors. So it's something definitely for all fit pros to look into integrate with now these days, the whole active aging is a huge area in my opinion that not only is it, extremely popular, but it's very, it's an area that's also important that we look into these, uh, these areas and how to improve training for the active aging population with this population as, in, as sensory decreases, as we age, what are some of the precautions that this population might take and how can they potentially utilize the education and even the products that you, that you have with Naboso? Yes. Yeah, so, from the aging population, um, keeping 
feet strong, but like you had said, from this sensory perspective is very important. Yeah. Uh, one of the um, most important concerns with age is, of course, maintaining functional movement, maintaining balance is obviously yeah. a big one. And our feet, our, our foot strength, our foot sensory stimulation, our foot mobility all plays a really, really important role in how we maintain balance. Mm -hmm. um, so that means getting the older clients out of their shoes, getting them onto harder surfaces, which sometimes seems a little counterintuitive that people <laughs> would think that they would want to be on a softer surface because of from a comfort perspective, but harder surfaces actually stimulate the nervous system more. Mm -hmm. Um, getting them out of the, the cushion shoes when they're not barefoot. So when they have to wear shoes, thinking about the role that too much cushion could actually destabilize them. It mm. takes away sensory stimulation. Of course, the integration of the Nervoso products, which are textured socks and insoles to bring sensory stimulation back into the feet. Um, and for those that maybe have never thought about the nervous system before is everything that you're doing is really influencing, modifying, or optimizing the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really do look at surfaces, products like Noboso, shoes, socks, cushion, and anything that's kind of damping or blocking or taking away that input is going to have an effect on movement, balance, and posture. And it's not just for the aging client. It's also for the athletes is for everyday individuals who maybe stand on their feet. Um, or it's also really important for children as well. So one small joke that hopefully now I can take this advice you're giving and I can go tell my wife that she was wrong with something. <laughs> so this is just the day and age we live in with influencers and everything that one of the influencers that she follows, my wife, of course, looks at house stuff, different floorings, walls, all that kind of stuff. And one of these influencers talking about tile fatigue. And I was like, what? I've never even, what does that even mean? And it, she was saying, I guess the tile that you walk on, it's hard. And therefore it causes some type of pain in your feet. And I was like, I don't, I, I, that doesn't just register in my head. So you're saying that I can tell her that that's not true, right? <laughs> With the tile <laughs> fatigue. Um, I mean, <laughs> Now I kind of get it from living here. And I actually hear a lot from patients that there is a tile fatigue. So oh, no. I know, I know. I'll no. actually give her that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you uh, release the feet, stimulate the feet, kind of alter the stimulus. This is what I would say is like a, a, a big takeaway that I tell people, which may be kind of related to it or, or not is mm -hmm. just variability in stress is mm. really important. So when you stand in one place for long hours, that is a constant similar stress to the feet and to the body, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually really hard on the body sitting too long. Sitting is obviously uh, stressful on the body even though it doesn't seem like quote unquote, it would be stressful, but it's a very static, consistent position for the body. And then tiles and things like that. Similarly, um, I just hear a lot of it. So yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, no, that's okay. Even though I didn't win that one, I'll, <laughs> it was a good answer. And <laughs> I'm sure the, the listeners will like that response. But uh, here we go on this next one, this next thing that, uh, I think it's more of like a, a background thing too, that the feet, but also your background with being a podiatrist and barefoot training. So from my training perspective, I'll call it. So my background is more and the areas within exercise science that I like are of course more in the strength and conditioning realm. But one of the things that I've always thought about with shoes wearing your shoes is safety in the gym and the way that I've pitched and I've made tutorials or videos on why I think your the Naboso insoles are great is that I've always thought about shoes as being safety. It's in the gym, potentially the surfaces you're walking on. Um, but also if you're dropping anything, you want your feet to be safe. Uh, 
but with barefoot training, it's a very popular area. And I've kind of said that these insoles are kind of a segue into the best of both worlds. You can work in terms of sensory within your shoes, the normal shoes that you wear. So it's almost a best of both worlds there in terms of barefoot training and sensory training there. Would you say that there are shoes that people should look at or should they do a combination of maybe doing barefoot training and potentially upgrading the shoes that they wear? So from a safety perspective, just mm-hmm. to kind of put a question back at you, yeah. sorry, mm-hmm. are, is, are you saying from a traction perspective or from the, the weights dropping on the foot and, and things like that? I'd say a, a combination, traction, okay. something dropping, surfaces, uneven surfaces. Um, I think I've even thrown in there in the past um, with some of the cushion helping with joints, ankle, knee, hip. But I know that there's both sides of it. There, there are shoes out there that maybe there, or that there are too much cushion for individuals out there. So I know that's a very extended question there. And even I'm sure we could look at uh, a variety of different shoes as we go into that. Yes. Yeah, so when you're deciding the environment that you would be training in, environment, I mean the barefoot, socks, shoes, cushion, minimal, Mm -hmm. kind of all of that, that environment Mm -hmm. would be understanding the why to what you may be doing. Yeah. Okay. So one example would be Olympic lifting shoes that for the listeners, if they're not familiar with that is it's a shoe with a hard sole to it and typically a little bit of a heel lift. And the purpose of that shoe being hard on the bottom and having that heel lift is so that when you're doing Olympic lifting type moves that you can uh, essentially kind of bypass the ankle Mm -hmm. or cheat ankle flexibility and drop lower into the hips to generate power into the glutes. So it's really just this optimization of the sport and the demands and the requirement of power output for Olympic lifting and some of their, um, uh, moves that they have to do. Also the step bottom is really important when they're doing something like a split squat or something that has a dynamic nature under very high load, um, for safety purposes and stability. Um, you would actually want that. Another part of that is that in that environment or for any heavy lift, like very heavy lift is that there's actually a ceiling or limit to how much your soft tissue and your ligaments and muscles can kind of resist supporting the foot under that much load. So as you put more and more load on the body, your arch is going to start to compress more and more. This is where people who are overweight or pregnant or uh, carrying repetitive movements of heavy weights. I'm trying to think like a military kind of rocking, carrying mm-hmm. like a rucksack um, mm-hmm. that they can get plantar fasciitis because the arch is dropping under heavier load. And then they start to stretch it and you can get micro tearing in the fashion, things like that. So back to the Olympic lifting, very high loads that they're moving and lifting, having a stiffer shoe or a stiff orthotic in the shoe is actually beneficial to that sport and that movement. Okay. So that that's kind of a justification of the why Mm -hmm. if someone listening were to say, Hey, I have stiff orthotics and Olympic lifting shoes, which are stiff and have a heel drop, which is all anti barefoot, but they're, they have that explanation of why they're doing it. On the flip side, if you're doing uh, animal flow and let's say maybe kettlebells, and I, I know you do steel mace. I love steel mace. And you're doing these things that are multidirectional, carrying an element of momentum or they're body weight based. I would argue to go more on the side of getting out of the supportive shoes, either being in minimal shoes, being barefoot, bringing in that sensory stimulation, allowing all multidirectional movement and freedom of the foot so that that translates to the movement. I but it. I had the justification for that, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's where you would want to say, you know, what is the goal of what you're doing? Why would you want to achieve some sort of 
optimal function or stability from the foot? And then are those matching and being synergistic in their alignment? I dig it. I dig it. And that answer right there is exactly why this podcast was started really going into the application of topics. And that's why I always love when we have a guest like yourself that breaks it down, explains it in a way that anybody listening, like, yep, makes sense. I need to go apply that right away with my clients. So awesome stuff right there. One of the things that I saw when I was creating a tutorial, it was a review of the products, was a term that I hadn't heard about, but it completely made sense. And then I immediately started applying it with the insoles that I have. It, and that term was texture variability with the insoles that you have through Nabo. So can you jump into that a little bit? I know you briefly touched on it. Can you explain it a little bit more and talk about how you can apply those with the insoles? Yeah. So a big thing about our feet and why I'm an advocate of minimal shoes, barefoot stimulation, and then of course, Naboso, is that a lot of people tune out their feet. So they, they don't even feel them, think about mm -hmm. them, realize that they're connected to their body. So mm -hmm. they're, they're very tuned out. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why they are tuned out is because part of the mind and the conscious mind of what we focus on is very selective. We can't focus on everything because there's way too much stimulus that, you know, kind of a great example or analogy to this would be um, when I lived in New York city and all the sirens after a while, like I don't hear them anymore. <laughs> and then I listened back on a video that I recorded or something like that. I'm like, Whoa, there were a lot of sirens. Mm -hmm. I didn't even hear it, which I <laughs> you can understand. Um, so that's us tuning out because it's a constant stimulus. Okay. So that's, that's going to be part of it. So initially to get people to tune into their feet, I will take them out of supportive shoes into a more minimal shoe. There's all this sensory stimulation. They're like, wow, I can feel my feet, my feet function this way and have this movement and this strength and absolutely love it. Or they add in one of the Naboso insoles. So we have four different levels of stimulation or four different insoles. Um, and the one that you have is two-sided. So it has, we'll call it medium and high stimulus. When you put the Naboso insole into your shoe, any type of shoe, but let's say you had it in a minimal shoe that was already increasing your foot awareness, this just turned it up to a next level. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, wow. Oh my gosh. I feel my feet every step I'm taking. Mm -hmm. I feel this textural stimulation as I move through my foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now it's brought to the conscious. I forced it to the consciousness of your mind. That was my goal. Success. Okay. Now you're wearing them every day because you love them, which is amazing, right? But you're using them. And then all of a sudden you're like, like a week later, you're like, wait, talk to her. I'm like, I don't feel them the same. Are they flattening? Mm -hmm. Like, did they lose their effect? And it's like, no, no, no. A constant stimulus to the nervous system, like the sirens outside in New York City, you are going to start to tune it out again. It's just the protective mechanism of the nervous system. So that's actually why we designed the green one that has two layers to it or two levels that you flip it over slightly different level of stimulation. You put it in your shoes and you're like, Oh, there it is. And then you <laughs> feel that consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's textured variability. Or that's a variability of sensory stimulation mm -hmm. with our insoles. We say, to either flip the duo over or to alternate the green one with the blue, with the red. So you're alternating them and you're creating sensory variability to your feet, knowing that the texture of Naboso or the pattern and the two point discrimination is a pattern that is recognized by the brain. So you want to stay within that pattern but how do you play with the stimulation slightly to keep it conscious to the mind? Um, and that's, that's textured variability. But then I encourage the listeners to play around with sensory variability, which would mean that you are doing, that you are doing uh, barefoot, minimal shoes, hard surfaces, 
Um, if you love minimal shoes, go with zero shoes, Vivo barefoot, lambs, and just kind of play with the variability as much as you can to keep that nervous system sharp or guessing. Mm-hmm. Thing. I gotcha, I gotcha. Got okay. One of the things, and I'm deciding which joke I got to give now because uh, for the listeners, and I'll admit right now, I did the man thing and I didn't fully look into the insoles, read the directions, mm-hmm. fully look at the pam- pla- um, the pamphlet that came with it. So I went probably <laughs> weeks. I think it was actually actually four weeks without turning it over. <laughs> and, but then I, I had that moment. I had that moment where I was like, oh, wow, there it is. And because well, I do have the dual insoles. So I flipped them over and I was back in it. I love, okay, I love these again. And, but I made the mistake, of course, not reading the directions with these. But, uh, I, and the other part of that too was that before I made my tutorial on these insoles, I had to make sure I washed them off because they were just covered with all the sock stuff on them. But uh, the next thing that I always thought, that was just funny when you mentioned it with living in New York with the sirens and everything that I feel like sometimes when I've taken the I think you know a podcast one time that I had a guest on that was from New York and I was like oh my goodness there's just so much noise it, it, it honestly sounds like they're they're like ru- running through the middle of the street and that there's a, all these cars like are a part of it but when the way that you you said it I'm guessing that People just tuned it all out that to them, the noise is just not there. But anybody from another part of the country, they're like, oh my goodness, it's so noisy over there. Exactly. (laughs) Well, next part that I wanted to talk about in this podcast, because I always enjoy, and I've said this in other episodes, that it's always great talking with somebody that is a fellow entrepreneur, took those chances on themselves and really puts the work in to grow, to cultivate, and really try to innovate as well with the things that they're doing. And with both your companies, uh, let's jump into more on Neboso. What do you feel like were some signs that helped you know, yeah, we got something special here that let's keep pushing on it? Uh, so I would say the biggest one was feedback from our users. And mm-hmm. I'm going to all kind of Uh, take a step back for just one moment and say that at Naboso, our first product was actually a yoga mat. Mm. And this was me in the fitness industry for, um, you know, 20 years. Now the company is around for four years. So this Mm -hmm. was, you know, called 15 years. Mm -hmm. I was in the industry. So that's where I was thinking, okay, where's the application of where I could put increased sensory stimulation. And I thought on a surface, right. Which would Mm -hmm. be a mat. And then people could use it for their kettlebells or their yoga or their Pilates, however it was. And then started to see that there was a limit to the number of people that could use a mat because not everybody works out, right? Actually, a majority of people do not work out, (laughs) (laughs) even though in the fitness industry, you just think everyone does it, but Mm -hmm. actually very few people do work out. (laughs) from the percent of like Americans or, or mm-hmm. whichever country you're, you're listening from um, that I was like, okay, if this is a powerful stimulation, I need to make it more accessible to people. And where, where else are you getting the greatest foot interface? Of course, that's in your shoes. So then that's where it became the insoles. So we, we launched the insoles then our second year of business and marketed that to fitness professionals But what was actually really interesting is that a few of the fitness professionals that were using them and loved them had neurological injuries. Uh, One uh, very memorable gentleman had uh, multiple sclerosis. Another one had neuropathy. So they were having these neurological conditions that was affecting their balance, their ability to feel their feet, their movement patterns, And they use them and they're like, oh my God, like outside of just, hey, connect your feet for strength during your back squat or your kettlebell swings. They were like, no, like this is changing my life. Like every day that I walk to the car or, you know, at work or whatever it was that they're like, oh my God, like, I feel like I'm not drunk anymore. Like I Mm -hmm. can move more stable. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So then we were introduced to that and we're like, oh, 
Then we did a slight pivot in the company to really focus on that medical side, started partnering with some hospitals in New York City and the, the Northeast. They started using them with their patients with uh, MS, Parkinson's, stroke, other neurological conditions. And then that kind of opened this whole side of our business where we get testimonials, we sh get shown videos of before and after with our insoles. Um, I mean, some of these are like, you want to cry when you see them because people are crying. It's so yeah. powerful. So then that actually led me to, to kind of say, okay, there's actually something here, not meaning there's something to Naboso, there's something to the skin in the bottom of the feet when stimulated in a certain way or to a certain level is very brain stimulating and neuroactivating that from a, from a medical perspective can have this profound impact on someone's quality of life, movement, fall risk confidence, um, dementia prevention, you mm -hmm. know, happiness, mental health state, all of these things, because that's how powerful movement is, right? Mm -hmm. um, that I was like, okay, this needs to be researched more. So we are now um, doing several research studies, Naboso's not doing them. They're independent IRB approved controlled research studies with various hospitals, um, universities, and institutions that is looking at the effect of textured slash two point stimulation on the feet for a multitude of neurological conditions. Hmm. Um, and then showing how it's a uh, effective intervention for these individuals with our goal of eventually having them covered by the insurance companies mm -hmm. so that they can be really uh, utilized and accessible to all patients with, you know, various neurological conditions. So that, that was something that I never, you know, however many years ago when I first started doing the development of this, um, which it took several years to do it. So two years I was researching texture and surfaces and materials and, very, very lengthy process when you've never invented anything. <laughs> um, but back then I was just like, oh, it'll be like a, a textured yoga mat. <laughs> and that's kind of where I left it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if I could have this be researched and demonstrated and recognized by neurologists around the world as something for their patients, that is, that's truly the impact that I would love to make. That would be the legacy that I'd be like, okay, I made, I made, I made the, the mark or the impact mm -hmm. that I was, you know, put on this earth to do, which sounds kind of, you know, cheese -ball but it's kind of true on like no. the, the impact you want to make. And I think all the time I spent researching barefoot science and footwear and surfaces, I wanted to make that type of impact. Yeah. Yeah. That. I can say just because it's one of these things that just happened for me with my businesses that when you get that moment when you're like purpose, like this is part of my purpose within the industry, that you're just not another number, another individual within an industry that you have a, a purpose, it all just kind of clicks and it has to do with leaving a legacy. And I love that, that because I mean, that's kind of why we get into the health and fitness industry is to make an impact, make people's lives better and that right there is exactly it and to me it's not cheesy it, it honestly is amazing because you have that moment and it's kind of what drives you as an entrepreneur that you want to wake up you want to put more extra hours and you want to make that extra call whatever that might be because it's all part of that helping people and it's always great to hear that with somebody so kudos to you with that the mm -hmm. next piece that i kind of want to briefly talk about because i don't actually know much about these but more of an application technique here with the sensory sticks that you guys have what is the application for that for individuals in terms of integrating with their clients it's since this is more of an upper body thing that they're going to integrate with their clients how do they use these and what are the benefits for them yeah, so our hands have the same nerves as the skin and the bottom of the feet. So the palm of the hand and the bottom of the feet, same nerves. Uh, it's 
tactile, it's touch, it's actually called haptic. Uh, and those nerves are part of how we, you know, navigate movement, manipulate grip strength, shoulder stabilization, your hand, your hand is connected to your core, like your feet are connected to your mm -hmm. core. Um, mm -hmm. So this was our first product to get into very specific hand stimulation. So they are uh, two pound sticks with our texture, this pyramidal texture across the entire surface. And when you order them, you get two of them. So they're two pound weights. Uh, they're not shaped like a dumbbell. So they're, you know, longer stick. If, if people go to the website, naboso.com, they'll see. So now you could use them in various ways. You can use them to release. So you can roll, release, massage your feet, your lower leg, your hands, and then your, your forearm. We actually have people who use the sensory stick as a myofascial release tool to everything. Mm. <laughs> so it's not just for the hands and the feet, but it's a release tool, right? You're getting that myofascial release because it's a hard um, stick that you can release. It has the texture. So you're bringing in this combined sensory stimulation with the myofascial release, which is always good. The texture as you go across the skin is also really good for circulation. So microcirculation to the skin, blood vessels, and fascia. But now it's also an activation tool because it has the texture, but it also has weight to it, to the resistance. And resistance or weight is a very good stimulus to the nervous system and to the proprioceptive system in the joint capsule. So when you hold something that has resistance to it or weight, you create a slight tug or pulling on the joint capsule, which is where your proprioceptors or other sensory nerves lie, which are activating and telling the nervous system in the brain, postural and stabilization information. So that's another way so you can activate with it. And then the third aspect of it is strength. So obviously it's weighted. So you can use it as a um, warm-up rep. We have people that will actually use it doing Indian club moves. So mm. you're thinking of how much an Indian club weighs. This would be kind of your pre-club movement drills to kind of mm -hmm. move the, ner the nervous system doing smaller muscles like rotator cuff and things like that. And then we use it within the Pilates space as a Pilates weight because most Pilates and yoga weights are around two pounds and that's what our sticks are or two pounds. And then people with neurological conditions can use them as walking sticks as mm. well. So you could think of them like a walking stick. So sensory stick, Two pounds, you get two of them with the Naboso texture across both of them. It's a recovery tool or a release tool, an activation tool, and a strength or integration tool. Very cool. Very cool. I'm as we're going through this episode, I was looking at your guys' YouTube channel and I saw those. And then I know that I picked them up once and it was a very interesting feeling having them in my hands. And it's something that I'll look forward to grabbing a pair myself and trying them out with things that you just mentioned. Very cool stuff there. With now getting to the podcast takeaways for this episode, this is a chance for listeners to hear some advice outside of uh, what we just talked about from our guest on the episode. So Dr. Splickle, what are three myths about the fitness industry? Three myths? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Threw me off there. Um, three myths uh, of the fitness industry. Uh, I would say that uh, once you're certified, you are you know everything you need to know. <laughs> that is not true. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a believer in being a student for life. Um, I think that that is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, understanding and always challenging and growing, especially as it relates to fascia, nervous system, brain cognition, you know, kind of that that whole side of fitness is where that's constantly changing. Um, if so, this would be another myth. Myth would be within fitness is that it is very mechanical. Mm -hmm. So you're just thinking of flexion, extension, mm -hmm. muscles, like we're a bag of bones and you just move weight, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> bicep curls. Um, 
is not true. It is very sensory influenced. It is breath influenced. It's actually very emotional influenced. Um, so one aspect of how I actually look at fitness, movement, patients, life is very emotional based. Mm. And we didn't dive into that too much, but that's another aspect of how I use sensory stimulation and naboso is that they're quote unquote grounding or mm. connecting people to their physical body. And if you're not present in yourself, emotionally, physically, spiritually, however you want to think of it, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to control your movement or optimize your movement and performance or compensation and pain. Mm -hmm. go in many different directions. Yeah. Um, so we are very sensory based, fascial, breath, emotional versus mechanical, um, very uh, a physics. I, I don't look at the human body from a straight physics standpoint. Physics is like levers, right? Lever arms and joint angles. Mm -hmm. That's a very mechanic based of looking at the human body. Mm hmm not not fully encompassing of how complex we are. Yeah. Um, and then I would say that the third myth would be, um, which I, I think most people know this is a myth, would be single joint exercises like mm -hmm. bicep curls mm -hmm. and, you know, squats or lateral raise. But I am a big believer in body weight, functional, multidirectional, freedom of movement, um, you know, if your knee goes over your toe, <laughs> that actually happens <laughs> in the real world. So I'm actually not based off of these uh, very set standards. And I'm there's so much gray that when I assess, I don't get excited over a lot of things because it's just this one moment in time that you happen to see that joint moving in that angle. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that there's just so much more to the story. So yeah. I hope those are good three myths. <laughs> oh, they are good. They're good. And the one that I'll just briefly chime in on, since that's what I do in this podcast, is the first one with both of us owning education companies and, of course, promoting education and the benefits that it can have on your fitness career. It's one of those things that I've been saying for the last now, probably two months in almost every podcast episode is about how an entry-level certification is exactly what it says in its title, an entry-level certification. It's just to get your foot in the door and you are literally covering topics that are, oh my goodness, so vast that you cannot believe that 30 pages, 20 pages inside of a certification is all you need to know. There's so much more out there that... Degree programs spend semesters, whole courses on just one of these topics. So 30 pages is never going to be enough. So continuing to learn more, grow, get outside of even your bubble of education, learn more about areas that you never thought. That is where you start to see growth and really ultimately seeing better programming for your clients. That's why we, we do what we do. We want to improve our clients' lives. So continuing down that education path is so important for fit pros. Constantly looking for other courses, not just what's the good deal, not just so that you can get your CEUs, finding stuff that you believe will push that, that boundary for you. So I love it. Before we sign off, here. Can you provide guests, social media links, website information, potentially any courses, anything like that that you have coming up? Absolutely. So my website for EBFA is ebfaglobal.com. And that will take you to our live courses that are uh, in person. There are some mm -hmm. live virtual so mm -hmm. kind of zoomed courses, um, but we do workshops in person around the world. We do have master instructors in, um, all the different major uh, continents, territories. And then we also have online education. So our certifications are online as well as smaller webinars. I do webinars once a month. So I love to put out content for professionals. So that mm -hmm. would be ebfaglobal.com. For Naboso, which is everything sensory product based, is going to be naboso.com or naboso.com which just a fun aside naboso means barefoot in check so ah. people are wondering what is that word it means barefoot 
Um, <laughs> and then my podiatry practice is just my name. So it's a DR Emily Splickle.com. If you don't know how to spell my last name, then just Google Dr. Emily podiatry and it'll come right up or Dr. Emily barefoot. It'll come up. And then um, I'm on all the social platforms. Uh, my Instagram is DR Emily DPM do a lot of content on there as well. And then of course, YouTube, I have many, many resources and videos. Um, so yes, check it out. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Dr. Splickle, for coming on the podcast, sharing many application items for the listeners. Can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Hey, Fit Pros, it's your host, Tyler Valencia here. I quickly want to share a free resource we have on the KIPPS website and YouTube channel. If you're struggling with your online workouts or just want to see the items that we recommend, check out our virtual training resources page. You'll find breakdowns on streaming setups, reviews on microphones, and other free videos that can help you build your fitness business today. Did I mention they're free? Go check them out at the link in the description or head over to our website to find them under the blog tab.